Hello there! Uh, you may be wondering why I'm playing System Shock 2, because I do have a co-op run on my channel, and that is because that was not really an atmospheric or story run. I kind of skipped a lot of the story, and I kind of regretted that, because uh, I got into the story recently, and this is one of the best games of all time. So I decided uh, I'm going to redo it. Um, and it's in single player, nobody's playing this with me, so... Uh, for this one, we will be playing on Impossible and be doing a Psy Malay run, so let's get, let's get going. Look at you, hacker. A p pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems. Nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNM Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek. Fast. Revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN Recruitment Facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The grav shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the grav shafts. So I'm gonna be letting the dialogue play. There's no subtitles, so um, there's not much I can do for that, sorry. Step into the grav shafts to proceed to the street level recruitment. And here we are on some planet. And so, uh, one thing we're going to be getting here is, I'm, no spoilers, I'm not going to tell you any of the story. Um, we're going to be playing the Space Jam, so I'm going to take this basketball. Because we all love the Space Jam, don't we? Well, here we are. Before you choose your career, you'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you should go into the Basic Training Center. When you're done with Basic Training, proceed to the Advanced Training Area. Uh, we won't be going into basic training because that's like FPS 101. Advanced is more about what this game is about, so... If you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. When you finish training in the three areas, proceed directly to the recruitment center to choose and start your military career. I already understand this game, so we won't be doing that. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. The shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. 
Okay, so uh, you get three choices. Uh, Marines are more of the uh, guns. Like, they, they're really good at all weapons, uh, really good at survivability. Uh, not so good at being technical or psi, but you can you can obviously, any of these classes can kind of go into it later. Although really, you should kind of specialize, not be a generalist in this game. So if you, it, this is actually probably the best starting class if you've never played this game, because you'll have the easiest time, especially at the beginning. Uh, this class is more about hacking. You get early hacking and tech abilities. Uh, but it, to be honest, both of these are, they have a lot of overlap. They're basically the same, I would say. Uh, so that's why I'm not going to do either one because I, I, I actually already did a navy run on stream so people may have seen that already. I, but they're, they're virtually they're virtually identical so I'm not too interested in doing these ones. Always say though you get uh, psi abilities uh, and th th that's actually the most the hardest and one of the most interesting ones. So I'm going to be doing a Malay psi run so let's go hop into the shuttle bay over here. By the way, this game uh, is now on good old games. It is, before you could only pirate it if you want to buy it, but now you can actually, you can buy it now. So it's on It's on good old games. It'll probably be on Steam a bit later, uh, and uh, if, if you prefer the Steam version, but um, I have modded this with graphic mods and all that kind of uh, jazz, so you get uh, pretty graphics. We all love pretty graphics. And we also get like pretty space graphics too. The OSA welcomes you to Orbital Station Chun Lo. Ready yourself to feel the limitations of your mind slipping away. We will guide your path over the next four years. The shuttle base at the center of the station will ferry you to your next stage of growth. When you've chosen, head into the appropriate shuttle bay. Get ready to learn things you have never imagined. Okay, so the the selection of assignments is basically you get uh, early on buffs to certain uh, attributes. So I'll show you each one. I'm not gonna let the dialogue play for every single one of them, uh, but uh, like I'll show you which one I'm doing though. The sensory deprivation. Not this one. The sensory deprivation. Not this one. The sensory deprivation tanks aboard the TOS Shaoling await you. There you will spend a solitary year focused in a meditation on motion and sound and how they may serve your will. Now this one will give me, uh, uh, it'll let me have a buff of plus two cyber points which will help with hacking. Uh, my good friend Catalos actually wanted me to do uh, the, the reflective screen which gives a 15% 15, 15 damage reduction. Um, I don't know, I, I don't think that's useful because you have to constantly recast that. I prefer the uh, cyber ability. Because um, one of the new ability, one of the abilities I get after this is, um, uh, I, I'm a big speed whore in this game. I love speed, and I think that also helps to negate a lot of damage. So, uh, so now I have uh, cyber affinity, cryokinesis, and all that kind of stuff, which is really nice. Okay, so for the next one, uh, let's see. Your uh, body has been one. neglected in your training of your mind. On IO, you will find soldiers who wish to test their endurance. You will surpass their physical prowess without compromising your mental discipline. So there's endurance, and then there's like two others. Um, uh, one is for Psy, and I think the other one is like, I don't know what the heck, probably agility or something. The reason I'm getting endurance is because I am playing on impossible, and we do not want to... Um, endurance basically gives you a lot of starting health, uh, so there's really no reason not to get the starting health, especially on impossible, unless you, like, you enjoy dying a lot, so... Uh, there's that one, and uh, let's go watch this guy. <laughs> a little bit of an Easter egg. He's doing the Macarena. <laughs> hey, Macarena. I only know of two Easter eggs in the, this game, and that's one of them. So, for this one. Many threats to security can only be defeated nope. from inside. In the grand scheme, nope. individuals are. Acts of political terrorism and corporate coercion disturb corporate and political stability. You shall spend a year battling these chaotic elements, both psionically and by physical force. This is honestly the best one. The, one of them turns off alarms faster, which you just go to a panel, and the other one prevents knockback on, on weapons, uh, like the, the recoil, so I'm like, that's useless. Oh well. Agility means I get to go fast, and I love to go fast. It is the best part of this game, it really is.
All right, well, we got all our abilities, so let's uh, actually start the game. Steady yourself, soldier. This is Dr. Janice Polito of the computer ops staff of the Von Braun. You're safe for the time being. You're recovering from the effects of surgery and will be unable to remember any of the events of the last few weeks. You're on board the starship Von Braun and something's gone very, very wrong. Some kind of force has hijacked this ship. That's why you volunteered to be implanted with some experimental cybernetic implants. Rely on your cyber interface. It just might save your life. You must find an elevator and come up to Deck 4 to meet me. Deck 4. Can you remember that? But keep your eyes open. They're after us both now. Watch out. I'm getting strange readings from that radar dish outside the window. It's become unstable, dude. Move! Take cover! Critical decompression hazard in the cryo recovery suite. Evacuating. Okay, we get our wrench, our primary weapon. Let's get going. So this is a bit of the tutorial uh, at the very beginning here, so you don't really have to worry too much about like enemies at the very beginning. And I have my basketball. Come on into the slam. All right. And uh, this is my this is my psyops ability, which is kind of cool. Uh, so let's go read the log that we just got. I will uh, scroll through it just so um, there's no subtitles once again, but it does have it in text, so you can pause the video and uh, read it if you want. Great. I've got to change the access codes out of Cryo A again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Grassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. So all we know is something went terribly wrong on this ship. Warning. Decompression event imminent. Please move immediately to cryo recovery B. Decompression event imminent. This power cell is dead. There should be a recharger nearby. Just use it and it will recharge all the power driven devices in your possession. After you've recharged the cell, plug it into the auxiliary power unit. That should open the airlock door. Be quick about it. The vacuum seals won't hold up much longer. Good. You've managed to get out before the whole area depressurized. I've just uploaded you some cybernetic modules. 
You can use them to upgrade your cybernetic rig at the upgrade units in this area. There are four types of units in the next room. One for each subsystem of your cybernetic gear. Stats, psi, weapons, and tech. But use the modules carefully. They're hard to come by. Uh, I'm gonna be saving them for the time being. Uh, and so, okay, well, we're getting nanites. Nanites are basically the currency in this game. We use it to, uh, uh, buy items from vending machines. And we just got another log, so let's go read that. Hey, Doc. A security bot showed up with orders for me to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? So this is supposed to be a hacking tutorial. I can't hack because my character doesn't have enough skill for that. However, this thing does have a very simple password, actually. It's just, uh, zeros. <laughs> it's, uh, you... It's, I guess it's sort of cheating. You do have to kind of know it, but, uh, but yeah, so this is, this is like a full, full on PC survival, uh, kind of cyber space kind of game. It's, it's really quite good. It's, it's, it's amazing. And it's very, very good at like, it's difficult. It honestly is. It's so much better than like things like Bioshock. Bioshock was, um, supposed to be a spiritual successor to this and it's not. I had no idea these were actually here. You learn something new every day. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting absolutely no weapons whatsoever. Oh. Can somebody let me out? I can't find my card. Please, let me out of here. Well, uh, let's pick up some more nanites. Go so, uh, that does absolutely nothing. All right. So the whole point of this game is you explore uh, and you try and survive and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I already have a Black Ops uh, Psy Amplifier, so I will not be getting another one. I've already been through this door. I think that's basically it. Ooh, there's things there. Okay. Uh, I'm almost inclined to try and parkour. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Nope. There we go. I didn't even save it. I didn't... Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Good, I didn't, I didn't die. So that's it. We're, um, we're, we've looted everything we possibly can in this area. Uh, so I'm going to save my cyber modules for the time being. I have eight at the moment. I need a lot more than that. And I have a fair bit of other resources. So uh, not much else to show off now. Now the tutorial ends and the game begins. So I'm going to turn on my agility ability. Well done. I'm uploading some more modules. So a lot of this game is centered around melee combat because you start with no weapon, especially as this class. So, and I also have the ranged ability. So I can hit him once. And now I have an unresearched object I can also have. So research is also part of this game. We'll explain what it does a little bit later. Um, for the time being, these crates, I can't hack them. So I have to kind of just leave them here. Also, the security stations, if I turn out, if I accidentally trigger security, can't hack them either. I, I am kind of screwed for the beginning here. Um, items like food will give you uh, health uh, back, but however, alcohol will take away your side ability, so it's probably not something I want to ever touch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid alcohol. Why is it that no one listens to me? The security protocols on the Xerxes system are clearly immature. Some idiot hacked into the primary data loop last night. Damn. The power outage has also taken out access to this bulkhead. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find a recharger. The one you used before is in hard vacuum now, I'm afraid. But there should be another one on this deck. Once you get the battery recharged, place it in the auxiliary override. Alright. Another one? Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. Okay, so some things I picked up. I have a game cartridge, and I use that. And I can actually start up the game. Uh, uh, there's an MFD game player. So I can start playing. It's basically Minesweeper. So like it just pretty much works like Minesweeper would. Uh, won't be using that 
Uh, it's just kind of a fun little thing that you can do when you play this game. On most decks, you'll find a quantum bio reconstruction device. Xerxes shut them all down, but I've discreetly put them back online. You'll need to interface with each machine locally to provide a quantum entanglement sample. Once you do that, the device will be able to rebuild your body essentially from scratch. It's not pleasant, but it's preferable to slow decomposition. Alright, we're gonna continue the looting. Oh, I don't even know why I have this plant with me. Um, so I'm carrying around the ammo with me for a later date. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I want to explain what this thing is. It's a brawn booster, and what this does is, um, you can you can have uh, these implants, which essentially boost one of your stats by one, or have other effects. So by doing this, it'll slowly decharge, but it'll uh, give me uh, more and more, uh, more 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 strength for for melee, which is nice. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau City. Kerenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watt. That insipid computer Xerxes has shut down the elevator as well. You can transfer power at the engine core on deck one, which will get the elevator up and running again. But you can't use the elevator to get down there. Wait. There's some kind of maintenance access right on this hallway. You can use it to reach deck one. However, it's locked, and Xerxes is hiding the passcode from me. Dr. Watts should have the code. He's probably in the crew subsection. Grassi has the key to get in there, but he's in the medical subsection, probably near the biopsy lab. Now get to the medical subsection and find Grassi. God damn. Somebody's hacked into this thing again. I'm gonna tell Delacroix. So there's vending machines all over the place, kind of like how Bioshock had it, if you're familiar with Bioshock. Uh, obviously Bioshock got it from this, um, but can't hack because I require level 3 hack. Not like I'd really want anything here at this point, because we're, we're so uh, it's, we're so early into the game here. Xerxes has control of the ship's security system. Avoid or destroy any security cameras you see. You can hack security computers to power down the cameras too, if you're good enough. But don't botch the job, or you'll set off the alarm yourself. Your corpse is useless to me. So with agility I can just run right up to the cameras, which is kind of nice. And, ooh, what's in here? Uh-oh. Welcome to the worst enemy in this game. Ah, oh, fuck, I died. <laughs> so... Uh, the way death is handled in this game is you simply, if you have one of these things, you just come back and you lose like 10 nanites. So you lose a bit of resources uh, whenever you die, which is a good thing. Um, I also lose my buffs, so I have to get my buff back. And I can also like get this guy from long range. It just, that requires size and size in the bottom corner here, so... I may not always want to do that. I think it's going to be my best interest to go use a med hypo so I don't have to die all the time. And I can't get into here anymore. Well, that's not good. Oh, that sucks. I can't go into there anymore. Oh well. So if I had not died, I would be able to probably get that chest right here. And uh, uh, There's nothing important necessarily in that room, there's just loot. So, oh well, I'll leave, I'll leave it in, don't worry, no need to... That's it, restarting the LP! Can I get in through here? Oh, I can get through, okay, never mind. I, I salvaged it, I can get through here. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna melee, I'm gonna get in with one of these things first. Okay, so once again, can't hack this, so kinda just have to deal with it. Uh, there's like a little side room for no reason. There's little information terminals in case you've never played the game before. Okay, here's the worst enemy. Die! I hate these guys. They're the worst. Alright, well, oh, there's two more logs. 
I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shaft shorted out the primary access channel, and that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? All right, and down here is a guy, but if you're smart, you can just hit the explosive trails next to him, he dies. If you're smart, that is. Ever since we reached Tau Ceti, the lab monkeys have been acting strangely. Nurse Lesser picked one out of a cage to be brought in for vivisection, and the rest of them, I mean the entire group, stood up on their legs and howled. This wasn't just a random display, it was a protest. Oh, medical hypo. So we're, we're you know, it, it honestly is a game where you do not have a whole lot of loot. So it actually kind of makes sense for you to uh, play very conservatively. And so that's, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, but we are out of time for today. So next time we will uh, continue into this room. I'll see you later. Bye.